The Continental RPM Adventure is an annual event during which we host the motor industry and also use the opportunity to evaluate a series of cars in a particular geographic environment. As the name Adventure implies, there is some off-roading and this year we've got some hardcore 4x4 to be done, but we've added an extra component and that is at Aldo Scribante Racetrack. The event ran over two days, with the first focused on putting a fleet of all-terrainers through their paces in the Coxcomb region, west of Port Elizabeth. Selected vehicles were fitted with the latest Continental and General tyres. The performance cars, ranging from sleek coupés to hot hatches and muscle cars, got their turn on day two, with the Scribante circuit the scene of the action. Again, Conti was the performance rubber of choice. But with PE being the home city of Continental Tire, the very first port of call for the adventure guests after arriving in the friendly city was the tire maker's head office and factory in New Brighton, where senior executives, including Conti Tire South Africa Managing Director Dieter Horney, provided an overview of the highly sophisticated and competitive tire industry in South Africa. The briefing was followed by a tour of the Continental Tire manufacturing plant, but our cameras were not allowed into the high-tech facility. Soon, however, our first group of adventure vehicles was on the road to Hanky and Potensi, with the undulating country roads of the region providing a good test of ride quality and road handling. The huge sundial and Saki Bartman Memorial outside Hanky was the first stop and offered a superb vantage point of the area. Just outside Potensi, it was time to swap tar for dirt as the all-terrainers headed into the Coxcomb foothills towards the Irlands River. This would also be the real start of the 2012 RPM adventure. The first half of the adventure starts surrounded by some amazing scenery on the edge of the Bavian's Kloof Reserve. Yes, we've brought along a convoy of both soft roaders and series 4x4s because obviously the conditions change. We have some basic gravel roads, but also some pretty challenging 4x4 terrain. But while our intrepid all-terrainers continued their progress into the mountains, let's take a closer look at the soft roaders in this year's RPM Adventure fleet. The Q3 on our adventure is powered by Audi's ubiquitous 2-litre engine and also features their famous Quattro all-wheel drive system. It is every bit the thoroughbred Audi, but that also means that even though it is a baby SUV, it sometimes feels a little bit too refined to want to get dirty that often. With its tall stance, premium interior and 155 kilowatt engine, the Q3 is comfortable and competent even off the beaten track, but it's best kept away from the really rough stuff. Is it a tall passenger car, an executive express or a sporty SUV? The recently updated BMW X6 is all of those, but it's also refined and fun to drive. The big question is, how will this vehicle cope on gravel? Pretty well, it turns out, although those massive wheels and ultra-low profile rubber don't offer the best grip on sandy surfaces. And besides, the city slickers who drive this beast are unlikely to want to stray too far from the bright lights. From Germany to France, which is where the Citroen C4 aircraft hails from. But how French is it really? Citroen has a reputation for innovation and deservedly so, but the C4 Aircross is more Mitsubishi than Citroen. The reason for that is that it's based very closely on the Mitsubishi ASX. The ride of this car is a little firmer than expected and in fact if you get onto gravel it's downright hard sometimes. The upside of course is that it isn't scared of the twisties if the surface is paved. Hyundai first made its mark here as a budget beater, but these days its range is much more extensive and more sophisticated too. The iX35 is the car that reignited a lot of South Africans' interest in the Hyundai brand. It offers good styling, good spec and a good drive at a good price. And even though it's been around for a while and competition is tight, it remains one of the best cars in its class. The Kia Sportage looks more European than Korean, but the underpinnings are very much Kia's own. It's pretty competent on and off the road, but this vehicle's usage generally focuses on curbs and potholes rather than real 4x4 routes. 
That's especially true of this 4x2 model, but then soft road owners buy vehicles like the Sportage for their stance, their space and their versatility, rather than any real off-road talent. The Lexus RX 450h is the only hybrid in our lineup this year. It's powered by a six-cylinder petrol motor assisted by two electric motors. And while it features a Lexus's standard list of comprehensive kit, it also gets by with impressive fuel consumption. Given that conventional all-terrainers of similar size are often thirsty beasts, the frugal appetite of this Lexus is a welcome trait, as is its upmarket execution. Just don't try to conquer Africa in one. If this Peugeot looks familiar, it's because it's a very close relative to the Citroen C4 Aircross. The 4008 is full of typical French avant-garde ideas and eye-catching details. It is Peugeot's first SUV, although it's not a car they developed on their own. They had some help from Mitsubishi. In fact, in some cases, they had a little bit too much help. The result is a car that looks like a Peugeot, but drives and feels like something more generic. The Renault Collios might look less gung-ho than some other SUVs, but it's easy to underestimate this vehicle. It does have full-time four-wheel drive, decent approach and departure angles, and a fair amount of interior space. So when you do venture off the beaten track, you'll be surprised with what this baby can do. This particular unit was used to promote the Ultimate Brymaster reality show, which explains the eye-catching livery, but it's the Renault's all-round talent that matters most. By midday, the all-terrain convoy had safely arrived at a scenic lunch spot, and after enjoying some hearty fare, our guests prepared to tackle a somewhat more challenging 4x4 route behind the wheel of the Adventure Fleet's hardcore off-roaders. While they negotiated the ruts, descents, and washaways, let's take a closer look at these 4x4s and what makes them tick. Chevrolet already has the Captiva compact SUV in its stable, but the larger and tougher Trailblazer is a new addition, and in diesel 4x4 form, it should have no trouble with the tougher parts of the Continental Adventure route. It certainly looks the rugged 4x4 part with a robust presence that suits its terrain-conquering intentions, but it clearly has the class-leading Toyota Fortuna in its sights. Ford's Ranger is another off-road favorite. Right now, the Ford Ranger is the pick of the one-tonner crop, not only because of its contemporary styling, but also because of its all-round capability. The 2.2 TDCI might have a smaller capacity engine, but it still offers willing performance, even though there is just a little bit of turbo lag. A spacious cabin with smart and durable finishes adds to the Ford's overall appeal. By comparison, Isuzu's one-tonner is showing its age. The Isuzu KB is seen more as a workhorse than a lifestyle vehicle, but this Alex version provides creature comforts like Bluetooth and a very comfortable interior, which still comes across as fairly utilitarian, but it's blessed with a good diesel motor and proper off-road ability. A brand new KB is due for launch next year. I've always thought of the Jeep Wrangler as a bit of a poser's car, and I still believe that most people who buy them buy it for the look rather than the lifestyle. And even though it's got some odd engineering ideas like tethers on the door instead of locking hinges and a removable roof that has to stay at home once it's off, there's no denying it is very capable off-road. And you have to give it some respect for being one of the world's more iconic cars. The Wrangler makes traversing difficult terrain look both easy and effortless. Talking of effortless, Mazda's one-ton 4x4 is another off-road star. The Mazda BT-50 shares its mechanicals with the Ford Ranger, and the 3.2-litre turbo diesel engine is a winner in both power and consumption terms, which leaves the styling as the most important differentiator here. And frankly, the Ford looks a lot beefier. Even so, the Mazda is distinctive and attracts much attention, while the cabin is well-equipped and comfortable. The Nissan Navara was one of the first one-tonners to introduce a larger form factor, and it's still an imposing machine. 
When you or I see a Navara, we think Bucky. But Nissan are intent on including this car in the ever-broadening definition of sports utility vehicle. It's got the utility part down, it'll carry a full ton, and this top-of-the-range LE version has got all-wheel drive with low range. There's plenty of power, but the hard rear suspension makes for skittish manners on dirt. It's easy to mistake the Suzuki Grand Vitara for just another soft roader, but it tackled the rough 4x4 route with glee. The Suzuki Grand Vitara has just undergone a facelift and the result is a brand new nose, different wheels and a spruced up interior. The 2.4 litre engine has remained exactly the same though, as has the transfer case which means that this vehicle is much more talented off the road than you'd expect. It's also attractive in a clean cut contemporary kind of way, but those 18 inch wheels don't do the ride quality or the off-road traction any favours. And compared to the real gung-ho machines, the Suzuki could do with some extra ground clearance. After a long day in the off-road saddle, it was time to hit the road back to Port Elizabeth for a welcome rest and to prepare for the next day's track action. Time for a break, but when we return, we tackle the twisty Aldo Scribante race circuit in our fleet of Continental RPM Adventure performance cars.